Tucson. The ribs were delicious. So thank you for that. And also Mount Lemon was beautiful. It was really nice and crispy, so I felt right at home up there. And it's pretty hot down here, but it's been great. So thank you, everyone. And we're there in 2 Kings 10. If you would, look at verse number 15. And I, I want to focus on this interaction between Jehu and Jehonadab. I think it's a great story. It's a story that's always stuck out to me in the Bible. Look, if you would, at verse number 15. The Bible says, And he was departed thence. He lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Recap, coming to meet him. And he saluted him and said to him, Is thine heart right as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. So here in 2 Kings 10, we see Jehu, who, if you, if we, we saw the chapter, Jehu was a strong leader. Jehu was not the type of guy you wanted to mess around with. Right. He was a very intimidating man to be around. And here we have a story where Jehu comes across Jehonadab. And he says, hey, is your heart right? Like, my heart's with your heart. And if it is, come alongside with me. And this evening, I want to preach about serving alongside a strong leader. Serving alongside a strong leader. Jehu was not a man you wanted to mess with. This was a man who was a leader. And he was a strong leader. And he was not messing around. You say, why preach this tonight? Because, well, you know, I come from Verity Baptist Church where we have a very strong leader in Pastor Roger Jimenez. A strong leader who leads a strong church. Come in a faithful word. Hey, there's no doubt you have a very strong leader in Pastor Anderson. Amen. In this church, you have a strong leader in Brother Corbin. These are strong Amen. leaders. And here in this story, we see some things that we can learn about serving alongside strong leaders. So we have four points. And look, and if you're a man, you might want to take notes because if you're a man, you have to choose to be a strong leader. Amen. Choose to be someone who can lead strongly, who can be strong, right. who can be the man who God can use to, to lead in a strong way and there's four points i want to see that and uh, four benefits that we see and four things that you can expect when you're serving alongside your strong leader number one we see that a strong leader will make you come to the place where you must make a decision a strong leader will make you come to the place where you must make a decision look verse number 15 again the bible says and he was when he was departed thence he lighted on jehonadab son of rechab coming to meet him and he saluted him and said to him, notice, notice the question that Jehu poses to Jehonadab. He says, is thine heart right as my heart is with thine heart? Right off the bat, he puts him on the spot. He says, is your heart right like my heart is with, right, with your heart? And this is what a strong leader will do. A strong leader will make you come to the place where you must make a choice, where you must make a decision. You see, a strong leader knows where they stand. And here we know, we know where Jehu stands. Jesus said, hey, I know where my heart is. My heart's with your heart. And he asked, hey, is your heart with my heart? And look, every week you come to this church and you hear the preaching, you're put on the spot. There's a challenge. There's something that you must choose to take home or not take home. And you want to be willing to take a risk and make a decision. You see, I don't have to wonder about what Brother Corbin believes about certain doctrines. I know what he believes on the Bible. I know what he believes on salvation. I know what he believes... And when you come to church, he might put you on the spot and say, hey, do you believe these things? Do you believe what I believe? Do you believe what the Bible says? And you must choose to make a decision. And look, you must be willing to make those choices in life. See, oftentimes people don't come to these churches because they're afraid to take that stand. They're afraid to make those decisions. Say, hey, this is what we believe on salvation, on the sodomites, on the Bible, on whatever it is. But you must choose to make those decisions. And throughout the whole Bible... What we see is great leaders, strong leaders, putting people in a place where they must choose. Keep your place here in 2 Kings, but go to Exodus 32. Exodus chapter number 32. You see, a strong leader, they know what they believe. And when you come across a strong leader, when you serve alongside a strong leader, they will put you in a place where you must make a decision. Exodus 32, if you look, look, look verse number 26, here you have Moses, another strong leader. And notice what he does to the people. Exodus 32, verse 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, notice, who is on the Lord's side? Let, notice, let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Yeah. A strong leader, and like Moses, goes to the children of Israel and he asks the question, hey, make a decision. Who here is on the Lord's side? And Moses say, said, hey, I know where I stand. And most said, hey, if you're on the Lord's side, then come on over with me. And look, this can be an intimidating thing 
when you come across a man like Pastor Jimenez or Pastor Anderson or Brother Corbin, when they tell you where they stand and they say, hey, make a choice, make a decision and choose to stand over there or stand over here. And look, you ought to make those choices. You ought to make those decisions. People don't come to these churches because they know what we believe. They know where we stand, but they're afraid to make those decisions. But a strong leader will get you to that place where it might be uncomfortable, where it might be intimidating, but you must choose to make a decision. And look, every week you come to this church, you hear a new standard in life, you hear a new, you hear something new from the Bible, hey, choose, make a choice. Say, hey, I'm going to apply this to my life, I'm going to believe this, but make a decision and don't be afraid to make that choice. Yeah. You're there in Exodus 32, we go to Joshua 24. Joshua 24, and throughout the Bible, what we see is strong men, strong leaders, what they do is they get you to a place where you must make a choice, where you must make a decision. And look, these people in the Bible, people, we know where they stand. A man like Moses, hey, we know where he stood. He said, hey, I'm on the Lord's side. If you're with the Lord, join me over here. Jehu said, hey, I know where my heart is. If you're with me, then join me. Joshua 24, we see Joshua doing the same thing. Another strong leader in the Bible, Joshua 24, 15. Notice, it says, and if it, if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, notice what he says, he says, choose you this day whom you will serve. He say, make a choice, make a decision, choose who you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwelt. But notice, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. See, Joshua was saying, hey, there's no mistake on where I stand. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And a great leader like Joshua here, what does he do? He puts the people on the spot. Hey, make a choice. Make a decision. Choose where you're going to stand. Choose, are you going to serve the gods on the other side of the flood, or are you going to serve the Lord? But choose who, this day whom you will serve. And look, we ought to make choices in life. The choice ought to be, hey, are you going to serve the Lord or not? And you ought to make that choice. Are you going to obey the Bible? Are you going to apply the sermons? But make those decisions in your life. See, every week when you hear a sermon, you come across a decision, and you ought to be, not be afraid, don't be intimidated. It could be scary and intimidating, but look, make that choice. Go to 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. See, a strong leader knows where they stand, and a strong leader will get you to a place where you must make a decision. This is why it's easy to kind of go to an old IFB church, right? Because you don't really know where the pastor stands. They're not really clear on doctrine, and you never really have to come to a place where you choose anything. You can just choose to believe whatever you want to believe, and you're never challenged. You're never put on the spot to say, hey, choose what you believe on salvation, what you believe on repentance, what you believe on the Bible, on the reprobates. Make a choice. But this is why people, they're afraid to come to our churches because they don't want to make that choice. Right. But a strong leader will get you there. Here we have Elijah doing the same thing to the people. And, of course, here we have Elijah against the prophets of Baal and it, in 1 Kings 18, look at verse number 21, it says, And Elijah came unto all the people, in verse 21, and said, Notice, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, notice, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. See, most people are too afraid to make that choice. And Elijah is saying, Hey, I know where I stand. And if the Lord be God, hey, then he would follow him. But if Baal, then go ahead and follow him. And what I'm showing is that a strong leader will get you to a place where you must make a decision. And this is what I think is great about churches like ours, where we have strong leadership, where we know what they believe, and every week we're put to the test, hey, choose to, do, to apply the sermon or choose to believe this doctrine. But look, make a choice. And don't be afraid, don't be intimidated to come to those places where you must make a decision. And look, and as a man, as a leader, if you're a leader in your home, you ought to make those decisions in your home. And be the one to say, hey, this is where we stand. This is where we're going to go. But look, strong leadership knows what they believe. And strong leadership will get you to a place where you must make a decision. So don't be afraid to make those choices, to make those decisions. Go back to 2 Kings, if you would. 2 Kings chapter number 10. So what do we see? When it comes to, when it comes to serving alongside a strong leader, is that a strong leader will get you to a place where you must choose to make a decision. And look, that's what Jehu did to Jehonadab. He had to make a choice. And look, oftentimes people come to church, they start living for God, and after a while they get to the place where they choose, hey, should I continue or should I quit? They get to the place where I don't know if I can just keep going. We got to choose to make the choice to just keep on serving the Lord. But there's another benefit, or there's, there's something else that you will come across when you're serving alongside a strong leader. Not only will they bring you to a place where you must make a decision, 
But number two, a strong leader will give you their heart. A strong leader will give you their heart. What does that mean? Well, the Bible says that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You see, your heart is in the things that you invest in. And a strong leader, they'll give you their heart. They'll invest in you. Look at verse number 15 again. It says, and he was departed thence. He lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he saluted him and said to him, notice, is thine heart right? Notice what he says, as my heart is with thy heart. You see, Jehu is telling Jehonadab, look, my heart is with you. My heart is with you, Jehonadab. And he asks, is thine heart right as my heart is with thy heart? See, a strong leader, we see in Jehu, he's willing to give you their heart. He's willing to invest in you. And look, strong leadership invests in other people. Strong leadership will give you their heart. What does that mean? That means they're going to invest in you. And look, in this church, a strong leader like Pastor Anderson, there's no doubt in my mind that he has invested in this church. Amen. He's given you this, these great facilities, right? He's given you these beautiful chairs that are very comfortable to sit in. Amen. He's given you Brother Corbin to come in and preach three times a week. And look, Amen. I've heard Brother Corbin preach in person. Look, it takes work to preach sermons like Brother Corbin preaches. That's right. And it shows me, hey, he's giving you his heart. Why? Because he's invested in the sermons that he's feeding you. It's not a microwavable meal. No, he's feeding you a full course of vegetables and meat and a full dose. And look, that shows me, hey, he's giving you their heart. But that's what a strong leader will do. A strong leader will give you their heart. Go to 2 Corinthians, if you would. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 8. And look, and if you're a man, or if you're a father in the room, look, you're a leader. And as a leader, you ought to choose to invest in your family, in your children, give them their heart, invest in them, help them build. And look, weak leadership does the opposite. Weak leadership does not invest in people. They invest in themselves. But look, a strong leader will give you their heart. They'll take time to invest in you. 2 Corinthians 10, look at verse number 8. 2 Corinthians 10, 8, the Bible says, For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, what is that? That's, that's the, the leadership. He says, Though I should boast somewhat of our authority, which the Lord hath given us notice for the purpose of what? For edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. See, the purpose of leadership in Christianity it's not to lord over you. It's not to put you down. It's not to keep the leader above you and make sure you're below there. No, it's for your edification. Right. And what does it mean to edify? It means to build you up. And so leadership, a strong leader, what they'll do is they will build you up. They'll invest in you. They'll give you their heart. They'll give you their time and help build you into the Christian that you ought to be. Go to 1 Thessalonians 2, if you would. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 2. So when it comes to serving alongside a strong leader, a strong leader, not only will they come make you come to a place where you must make a decision, but they will give you their heart. They'll invest you. 1 Thessalonians 2, look at verse number 7. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 7, the Bible says, But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children, so being affectionately desirous of you, notice, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, notice, but also our own souls. <laughs> because you were dear unto us. He's saying, I'm not just willing to give you the gospel, I'm willing to give you my own soul because you were dear unto us. And if you want strive to be a leader, if you want to strive to be a strong leader, what you should do is you should learn to invest in other people. Learn to give people your time, your energy, give them your heart. Why? Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Your heart is the things that you invest in. And if you say, hey, I want to be a strong leader, then invest in other people. Because that's what a strong leader will do. Because a strong leader is confident knowing, hey, I, I, I know I'm the leader. But you know what? We don't need to prove that to other people. No, we need to help edify people, help build people. Go to Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians 1. Philippians chapter 1. Look at verse number 6. Philippians 1, 6. The Bible says, Be confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Verse 7, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, notice, because I have you where? Because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. You know what Paul is saying? He said, he said to the church in Corinth, the church of Philippi, he's saying, you know what? I'm giving you my soul. I'm giving you my heart. I'm giving you everything. The same way 
She who's telling Jehanadab, hey, I'm giving you my heart. Is your heart right with my heart? And look, in this church, it's no, it shouldn't be a doubt that Pastor Anderson, he's giving you his heart. Brother, Brother Corbin, he's giving you his heart. Why? Because they've invested so much in you. And so the question is, is thine heart right as my heart is with thy heart? You say, what should your response be when a strong leader like Jehu, a strong leader like the pastor you have, the deacon you have, when they give you their heart, what should be their, their response? We'll go to second, go back to 2 Kings 10. 2 Kings chapter number 10. You say, my heart is with Faith Board Baptist Church. My heart is with Pastor Anderson. My heart is with Brother Corbin. Well, if it is, look in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 15 again. It says, look at the last verse, look at the last phrase of that verse. It says, if it be, notice, give me thine hand. He said, if your heart is with me, then you know what? Then come alongside with me. If your heart is with me, then give me your hand. Get in this chariot and come fight the Lord's battles with me. You say, what should you do with the investment, with the heart, with the things that have been given to you? You should come alongside them. You should give them their hand and join them in that chariot to fight the Lord's battles. You should invest your time, invest your energy, invest what you have in the things that have been given unto you. Amen. You see, this church has been a blessing to you. Yeah. And what you should do, if you say, hey, my heart is with this church, then you should be invested in this church. Right. You should give your heart to this church. Give your investment, give your time, give everything you have to the things of God. If you say, hey, my heart's with them, then you know what? Give me your hand, get in this chariot, and let's fight the Lord's battles together. <clears throat> Go give you a place here. Well, number one, what do we see when we serve alongside a strong leader? Number one, they will bring you to the place where you must make a decision. Number two, a strong leader will give you their heart. But number three, we see that a strong leader will lead by example. A strong leader will lead by example. Look at verse number 16. And he said, notice, come with me and do what? And see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. Verse 17, and when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria till he had destroyed him according to the saying of the Lord, which he spake to Elijah. See, a strong leader, what they'll do is that they will lead how? They will lead by example. See, Jehu said, come with me, notice, and see my zeal for the Lord. Not, I'm not just going to tell you about my zeal for the Lord. Hey, right. let me show you my zeal for the Lord. And a strong leader, what they do is that they will lead by example. You say, I want to be a strong leader. Well, you better show people the example that they ought to, that they ought to follow. Mm -hmm. You ought to be that example where people can look at you and follow you. Why? Right? Because your actions, what you do, will speak more volumes than what you tell people. You see, your words can only go so far, but it's what you show people that will tell them, hey, this is a strong leader. Your, your walk talks louder than your talk talks. And so you gotta realize that what you show people has more influence, it has more power on people than what you will tell people. And a strong leader, what they'll do is they will lead by example. Go if you would to Matthew 23. Matthew chapter number 23. You see, Jehu didn't tell Jehonadab, hey, let me tell you about my zeal for the Lord. He said, you know what, come with me. And let me show you my zeal for the Lord. Why? Because a strong leader, what they'll do is they'll lead by example. And in Matthew 23, we see an example of weak leadership. Matthew 23, look at verse number 1. Matthew 23, 1, the Bible says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, Notice, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. That observe and do. Notice, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. See, Moses is warning the people about weak leadership, about these weak leaders who they'll tell you to do all these things. And Jesus said, hey, if they tell you to do it, then you should do them. But he said, but don't do after the works. Why? Because for they say and do not. See, this is what we call a hypocrite. When they tell you, hey, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, but they're not doing it. They're not following their own example. And he says, hey, watch out for these weak leaders. It goes on in verse four. It says, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders Notice, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Verse 5, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And here we see an example of weak leadership. People who don't do what they say that, that they want you to do. No, the weak leadership says, I'm here to lift myself up. And this is what the Pharisees and scribes are doing. 
They were using their leadership to make sure that they were lifted up and putting the people down. Binding heavy burdens to be born. Trying to just put authority over them, rule over them. But Jesus said, hey, don't do after their works, for they say and do not. Why? Because weak leadership will not lead by example. Weak leadership does not show you how it's done. You see, a strong leader will show you how to live the Christian life. They won't be a hypocrite behind the pulpit. No, they'll show you. They'll walk that walk with you. They'll lead by example. Go to John 13, if you would. John chapter number 13. And in John 13, we see an example of strong leadership, an example of the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter number 13. John 13, look at verse number 14. John 13, 14, the Bible says, If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, notice, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Here we have Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. You know, think about it. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Master of masters, washing the people's feet. Yeah. And he says, in verse number 15, notice, For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. You see, Jesus Christ left us an example that what, that what you do is what I have showed you to do. And this, is, this should be how we are as leaders, that if we want people to do something, we should show them how it's done. You see, the way Jesus led was he led by example. He didn't just tell people, hey, go soul winning. No, he went soul winning. He didn't just tell people, hey, live the right kind of life. No, he showed them how to live that life. He didn't just say, hey, wash people's feet. No, let me show you how to wash them. Why? Because a strong leader, what they'll do is they'll lead by example. They'll show you how it's done. Go to Acts 1, Acts chapter 1. And this is how Jesus Christ led. He led by example, by showing you how it's done. Acts 1, look at verse number 1. Acts 1, 1, the Bible says, The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, notice, of all that Jesus began both to do, notice, and teach. It doesn't say that Jesus began just to teach, just to tell people, no, of what Jesus began both to do and teach. Why? Because Jesus Christ, the strongest leader, he led by what? He led by example. And look, strong leadership will lead by example. And look, what we do, if you're a parent, look, I have a child, and the way we try to raise our kids is by example. We show our kids, hey, this is what we do. Let me show you how it's done. And a father will tell his kid, hey, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. We should be showing our children what, it's, what, it, what the Christian life is all about. It's not going to be enough for them to just to be preached at. They need a leader to show them how it's done. Go to 1 Timothy chapter number 4. 1 Timothy 4. So a strong leader, what, what will they do? They'll lead by example. They'll show you how it's done. A weak leader, they'll just tell you what to do, but they won't show you how to do it. And this goes to everyone. 1 Timothy 4, look at verse number 12. It says, 1 Timothy 4, 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Notice, but be thou what an example of the believers. It says you ought to be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And this goes both for men and women. If you're a lady, you know, the elders should be teaching the younger. And what you show them, ladies, is through, is through the way you live your life. It's by example. See, what we show people will last longer than our words will show people. Amen. See, when I think about my kids growing up, what I want them to remember about mom and dad is, is, hey, I remember mom and dad would wake up every morning and they would read their Bible together in the mornings. What's going to help them get along the way is, that, hey, I remember mom and dad, they sat me down and they had Bible reading time. I remember mom and dad, they, hey, they took me out and they showed me how to go soul winning. I remember they took me out and they sung the hymns along with me. Look, what we show people will last longer than what we tell people. And the way we lead, our strength comes through us showing people how it's done, leading by example. And we see Jehu telling Jehonadab, hey, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. I'm not just going to tell you about it. Let me show you how it's done. Go back to 2 Kings chapter number 10. 2 Kings chapter number 10. So when it comes to serving alongside strong leadership, number one, you got to realize that a strong leader will get you to the place where you must make a decision. Number two, a strong leader will give you their heart. Number three, a strong leader will lead by example. And number four, a strong leader will stretch you. A strong leader will stretch you. you say, what do you mean? Well, look at verse number 16. And he said, notice, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. Get the picture. Well, here we have Jehu. He stretches out his hand and Jehonadab, hey, he gives him his hand. And he says, come with me. And he goes with him. But notice what it says at the end of verse 16. 
So notice, so they made him ride in his chariot. You see, it got to the point for Jehonadab where it got a little uncomfortable, to the point where he felt like, man, he might have been forced to be there. But it goes on, it says, and when he came to Samaria, notice, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria till he had destroyed him according to the saying of the Lord, which he spake to Elijah. You see, Jehonadab in the chariot, he found himself in battles, in fights that he would have not otherwise been in. Right. That without a strong leader like Jehu, he wouldn't have been in that chariot. And while at times it might have seemed like he was forced to be there, without a strong leader there, he probably wouldn't have been in that battle. But you know what? I'm, I'm sure he was glad he was there. I'm sure he was glad that he had a strong leader like Jehu leading the way. But in the same way, you in your life, you ought to allow a strong leader to stretch you. A strong leader to get you into those battles that without them, you would not have otherwise fought. What does it mean to be stretched? It means that a strong leader will take you a little further in life than you would have gone without them. That they will make you get step out of your comfort zone and do things that maybe you feel a little uncomfortable in. Where you feel like, man, I can't believe I'm in this position right now. But you know what? But it's good for you to step out in faith and begin to do things that without those leaders you would not have otherwise done. In, in my life, I would not be preaching behind any pulpit if it were not for a strong leader in my life telling me, hey, you can do it. Get in there. Get behind there and just do it. But in the same way, you, without your Jehu, you will not get into those battles without them. But you ought to allow yourself to be stretched. Allow yourself to get uncomfortable, to get in that chariot, ride it, and get into battles that, you know what, maybe you are uncomfortable, but you know what, you ought to be there. And you ought to be willing to stretch yourself. Go to Luke chapter number 5. Luke 5. And in this story, we see Jehonadab, what we see, Jehonadab in battles that without Jehu, he probably wouldn't have fought. And it was, I'm sure it was uncomfortable to see the battles, to see the fights, but you know what? I'm sure he was glad he was there. And you in the same way, you ought to be willing to stretch yourself a little. Don't get to the place in your Christian life where you say, well, I'll never do that for God. Well, that's where I draw the line for the Lord. No, allow yourself to stretch out a little bit. Stretch your legs, step out in faith, and allow Jehu to get you maybe a little uncomfortable. Because look, we walk by faith and not by sight. You ought to be willing to take a step of faith every day. Do a little bit more. Allow yourself to get stretched in your walk with God. Amen. Luke 5, look at verse number 1. It says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Here we have people listening to the preaching of Jesus Christ. Verse 2, And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed that he, would, that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So get the picture here. We have Jesus Christ at the Lake of Gennesaret. He wants to preach to this big multitude. He sees a ship, which just happens to be Simon Peter's. And he says, hey, Simon Peter, would you be willing to just thrust out a little bit? Get me out just a little bit. Come with me just a little bit away so I can preach to the people. And that's what happens in verse 4. Notice. It says, now, and now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, notice, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. After he's done preaching, after the, after the work is over, he tells, hey, Simon Peter, would you be willing to go a little further with me? Would you be willing to go out into the deep with me? Could you take me out into the deep? And notice what the response is from Simon. Often this is our response. Notice in verse 5, and Simon answering, he said unto him, Master, we have told all the night. And I've taken nothing. Isn't that what we do? We start complaining. We say, God, I can't do that. God, I can't go further down the road. God, I've already gotten a little bit. You're willing, you're making me go this far. We start throwing excuses when the man of God says, hey, would you be willing to do a little bit more? Would you be willing to get out of your comfort zone? We throw, start throwing excuses say, God, you know what? I can't do it. God, it's too difficult. But it goes on. Verse number five. Notice what he says. He says, Never, nevertheless, notice, at thy word, I will let down the net. So that should be the response. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be a little bit scared. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Nevertheless, you know what? I'm willing to do it for Jesus Christ. Amen. Nevertheless, I'm willing to step out in faith to God. Notice in verse 6, And when they had done this, they enclosed what a great multitude of fishes and their net break. You know, what was it at the end of that tunnel for Simon? There was a great blessing from God. Right. He gave them those great fishes. And look, this is what's going to happen to you when you decide to stretch yourself a little bit. When you decide to step out in faith and say, and say when, and when Simon, when Jesus Christ or Jehu says, hey, would you be willing to do this for me? Step out in faith. You say, you know what? I'm willing to do it. And you're going to find at the end that you're going to be blessed. 
And it may, look, it may come to the place in this church where <sighs> things may need to get done. People, he may need you, Brother Corbin, may need you to step out and help out with something. Don't say, I'm never going to do that. Don't say, that's not going to be me. Like, you got to be willing to step out in faith and stretch yourself a little while because this is what a strong leader will do. A strong leader will make you go further than you would have otherwise gone. Just this Thursday, I was soul wedding with uh, Brother Aiden from our church. And on the way back from soul wedding, he was telling me that if it wasn't for Pastor Jimenez, he would have never been knocking doors. Or he would have never moved to Sacramento. And I was just thinking, man, this is, goes perfect with my sermon. I said, hey, can I use this? And he said, yeah. But this is what a strong leader will do. A strong leader will increase your faith by making you step out in faith. And don't be the Christian who you stop yourself from going because you say, you know what? I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. Don't be that person. Just allow yourself to go a little bit further. Go to Philippians 3, if you would. Philippians chapter number 3. So what does a strong leader do? And don't be afraid when your strong leader decides to stretch you a little bit. You know, that is a good thing for you to step out in faith, for you to get uncomfortable. It's okay to be uncomfortable in life sometimes. Pain can be a good thing. Philippians chapter number 3. Look at verse number 8. Philippians 3, 8. Yea, doubtless... And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Notice, for whom I have suffered the loss of what? All things. And do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Paul came to the point in his life where he said, you know what? I have suffered the loss of everything. And you, you'd think, you know, Paul, haven't you done enough even though you've lost everything? But he goes on. Notice what he says in verse number 9. He says, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Notice verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Notice, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended. Of Christ Jesus. You know, Paul is saying, you know what? I've suffered the loss of all things. I have suffered everything. I've lost everything. But Paul is saying, you know what? I'm not willing to stop. I'm going to keep stretching myself. He says, you know what? But I still follow after. Look at verse number 13. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things from behind and reaching forth unto those things from before. Notice, I press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, you know what? Even though I've lost everything, I'm still willing to lose a little bit more. I'm still willing to suffer a little bit more. I'm still willing to stretch myself. I'm still willing to go a little bit farther so I can reach the prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And look, Paul is saying, hey, there's more out there for me. There's more blessings for me, and I'm willing to lose just a little bit more. So you, and you walk with God... You ought to be willing to go a little further every single day. Man. Every single day you should be willing to step out and face, you know what? I'll do I'll be that man. I'll do I'll do what you want me to do, Jehu. Notice what he says in verse 15. He says, Notice, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, perfect, be what? Be thus minded. He's saying the way that I'm thinking right now, the way that I've lost everything, but I'm still willing to go on. He said, You know what? You be thus minded. You ought to think the same, saying, you know what? Even though I've gone out a little bit into that water, I'm willing to go out into the deep. Even though it feels like this chariot is, is uncomfortable, like I'm forced to be here. But you know what? Without Jehus, you would not be in the battles that you're in right now. And without men of God, without people stepping out in faith and giving you an opportunity, there would be no faithful word to Son. And so you got to take right. that and allow that Jehu to push you a little bit further. You know what? Because there, there's still more. This isn't the end. This is only the beginning. And there's still more for you when you walk with God. But you ought to be the Christian who's willing to stretch yourself. Be willing to go that next step and don't ever say, you know what, that, I'm not going to go any further. Why? Because a strong leader, what they'll do is they'll stretch you. They'll make you go further. And without them, you, you wouldn't be where you can be in the future. Go back to 2 Kings chapter 10. So what will a strong leader do? What is it like serving alongside strong leadership? Well, number one, a strong leader will bring you to the place where you must make a decision. And that's, it can be intimidating, but it's a good thing. Number two, a strong leader will give you their heart. Meaning what? Meaning they will invest in you. Number three, a strong leader will lead by example. They won't just tell you how to do it. They're going to show you how it's done. And number four, a strong leader will stretch you. You see, what's the purpose of, of strong leadership? What's the purpose of Jehu and Jehonadab and this story? We'll look at verse number 16 again. 2 Kings 10, 16. The Bible says, 
And he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. See, Jehu told Jehonadab, hey, come with me. You know what every Jehu needs? Every Jehu needs a Jehonadab. And as strong of a leader as Brother Corbin and Pastor Anderson and Pastor Jimenez, what they want and what they need is men to come alongside them and get in those battles. Right. See, the purpose is to fight the Lord's battles. But you know what? We need Jehus. We need strong leaders. And we also need you. Right. We need you to give us that hand and come along those battles. Verse number 17, it goes on. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria till he had destroyed him. Notice, according to what? According to the saying of the Lord. You see, one of the reasons we have Jehu is because he was supposed to name, proclaim judgment over the house of Ahab. And you know what? I'm sure he was glad he had a man like Jehonadab alongside him. You know, at Verity Baptist Church, in this church, what we're doing is we're fighting the Lord's battles. And our Jehus, our men of God, they need us. And they want us to come alongside with them. They're going to do it anyway, without you or with you. But you know what? You ought to be the one saying, you know what? I'm with you. I'm going to get in that chariot. I'm going to fight alongside with you. I'm going to give you my heart. I'm willing to stretch myself. I'm willing to be bendable. Let's do this. And let's get this done. Go, if you would, to Hebrews 13. Hebrews chapter number 13. So what is it like serving alongside a strong leader? Well, a strong leader will get you to the place where you must make a decision. A strong leader will give you their heart. A strong leader will lead by example. And a strong leader will stretch you. Hebrews 13, look at verse number 17. Hebrews 13, 17, and we'll end here. It says, Obey them, notice that have the rule over you, and what? And submit yourselves. It says, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Notice, for that is unprofitable for you. You see, strong leadership has been given to you to profit you. And the way it's done is by you submitting yourself unto the leadership that God has given you. And like you will not get far in the Christian life without strong leadership in your life. And so in your life, when it comes to those times, you ought to be willing to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to join you. I'm going to get in that chariot. I'm going to fight with you. And I'm going to be with you. I'm invested. My heart is with you. And I'm willing to stretch, my, to stretch myself. Why? Because you know what? You've been given a great opportunity. And you should be willing to pay it back. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for